First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. 50s right now. It's going to be close to 65 today. Uh, crazy. Uh, but it will be rainy, and although we might see a few breaks of sunshine later on today, we'll see what happens. Uh, and then uh, maybe Sunday looks okay, right? I don't have the forecast in front of me. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it's not looking good. Oh, good. Beautiful. Rain. Uh, well, it's not snowing, and that is to the dismay of some, I have to say. Coming up, we'll talk to Rachel Sutherland from Fox News on the uh, president's remarks uh, regarding uh, immigration. Got an interesting ring story um, from this week, and we have an update. We'll get to that. Uh, uh, let me just explain. At the end of the program, I believe it was two days ago, uh, maybe three. Uh, at the end of the program, we received a call from uh, a guy who had in New Hartford who had a problem about with uh, the fact that he lost his ring while well, he was out. I believe mowing his lawn or raking leaves or something. He lost his wedding ring. So devastated, knew he had to find it. Um, he was asking for people to. He couldn't find a, a metal detector, and without the radio shacks anymore, you can't seem to. Find a metal detector anywhere, although I believe there are places where you can pick up a metal detector. However, I believe it was one of our listeners that reached out to uh, to us. We reached out to him, and we might have been able to put something together. Now, did he find the ring? We'll get details on that uh, coming up in a second. Also, Steve Hauk this morning, uh, former uh, law enforcement, is going to pipe in on NY22. Uh, his standpoint. From a law enforcement standpoint, I'm, I'm interested. very interested to, to hear what he has to say. In studio this morning, um, with some news this morning, is former Boilermaker, uh, CEO, man in charge, Tim Reed, is, uh, is in this morning with an announcement. Lots more. Football for the weekend. Syracuse playing this weekend. There's just a lot to get into. Rachel Sutherland standing by right now from Fox News on the president. Uh, immigration is, a, uh, is becoming a key issue. Clearly, the president feels... It's an issue that's going to get his vote out. And it may. We'll have to see if it does do uh, that indeed. In fact, the president yesterday uh, giving a speech at the White House talking about some stuff he's already talked about when it comes to uh, this caravan, maybe more than one making its way up, but the big one that's uh, coming closer and closer. Uh, He says that he is planning to sign an executive order that would bar uh, illegal border crossers. So if someone doesn't go to an official port of entry, they will not be allowed to apply for asylum. He's also said that when and if this group comes, tries to cross the border, that they will be placed into tents, and uh, and then it will be decided whether or not their asylum claims have any merit. That can be a little complicated because of some existing uh, statutes and laws there. Remember the whole crisis with the separation of, of right. children at at the at the border that had to do with the Flores Agreement. And that could – that the president could run into some trouble with that this time again, and that I think gives 20 days. You can house, uh, say, families together in a tent-type situation or in – and we saw before, like a converted Walmart. Yeah, yeah. But only for a short period of time. So they're going to have to get really cracking on processing these claims. It, it is interesting, though, that, the, that during the campaign, this is one of the issues that the president uh, criticized – then President Donald or uh, Barack Obama about right these executive orders mm-hmm. that uh, oh yeah yeah right <laughs> yeah true it's it's funny how it uh, how things things kind of come around it's just that's politics though I guess it is and and presidents do oftentimes sign executive orders I think President Obama did sign far many more than President George W Bush I yeah. I don't know the running tally here with President Trump yet but um, this is certain to face court challenges I believe there's already a class action lawsuit in the work and it works with this. Uh, a group, some of the people in the caravan, are already trying to sue the government, saying their due process rights have been violated. Uh, you do wonder, though, um, if this issue, if the midterms were not just days away and had passed months ago, you do wonder if we'd be, if we would really be talking about this issue, at least right now, because they're so far away from, from the border. Right. And I wonder, too, I mean, that that is the skeptical lie, right? Because last I heard, they're around 900 miles away. Yeah. If they're walking and not taking well, – I was talking to Fox's um, uh, Longinus, William Longinus, and he said that they could take this train of death thing where they could be riding on the top and risking life and limb. 
if if they're going to keep walking for 900 miles, we're going to be talking about this in January. Yeah, yeah. This is not going to. This is maybe by do, 2020 they'll get I, here. I do think though that <laughs> yeah, for the, yeah, the launching of the campaign. I, I do think though that it will uh, it'll quiet down after Tuesday. We'll see though. Uh, interesting stuff, and it's going to be a busy weekend, Rachel, with uh, Tuesday looming out there. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Thanks so much. Thank uh, you. Rachel Sutherland from Fox News. Uh, coming up, we'll also talk to Tanya Powers on the uh, the latest of the uh, the synagogue shooting in uh, in Pittsburgh. So what do you want me to We have a debate that happened uh, in the southern tier uh, between Tenney and Brindisi last <laughs> night. We can talk about that a little bit. Um, I have, we don't, I, do we have any audio? We might have a little uh, audio, but for the most part, see. we have a, we have a transcript. Uh, Megan Pe- Kelly, uh, we talked about this earlier in the week. She's done. What did we say? She's done it at, at NBC and her stock has just lowered to the point where I just don't see her, her getting picked up. Everybody's thinking maybe Fox news, but, uh, well, according to Fox that she is just like we had said, what is called damaged goods in the business? I'm a big fan of Megan's. I, I, I like her a lot. Um, we didn't want her to leave Fox uh, when she did. Having said that, I'm very happy uh, with our current uh, lineup on Fox, and we won't be making any changes there. Is she damaged because of this whole experience? Sure. I think, that's, that's, I think, I think she is. Yeah. Do you think that she can go back into media after this? I hope she does because she's very talented. So, boy, what a what a mistake to take the job in the first place. It yeah, just didn't I fit. Was... It did not fit her. It didn't fit her personality. I, I just didn't think. No, and I mean, especially she came out and she, like you said, she did the Sunday show to compete with sixty minutes, which was dumb. Then when she moved to the morning, she gave us this whole spiel about I just really, really want to try and do um, non news stuff for a little bit, and we were yeah. all like. Mm, okay, we'll see how long it lasts in what two years? Yeah, a year, and uh, I don't think it lasted too. Davey would well, right know because he's an enormous fan. How right long after did it the last? Tw- Not yeah. long. What'd you say? Yeah, see, right after he doesn't season, even. He's he just can't, disturbed he's by dis- it. He's distraught. <laughs> can't even I think? Talk well, no, because it was after the. So she was working for Fox at the during the 2015 debates and things, yep. and 2016 debates. So. Probably right. just over she a year. Big, she left the, right after that. The big uh, to do with the president back then. Yes. Uh, HBO. Um, listen, did you see that uh, Dish Network? HBO has been pulled from the Dish Network. So if you have Dish, you are not able to watch HBO right now. There is a contract dispute, and they're off. And there's some new shows coming out, too. I don't want to disrespect Dish, but. They don't have much going for them right now. I mean, you've got DirecTV. That's the satellite service that has the contract for the NFL ticket. So if you're going to get satellite, you've got that option. Most people have cable. I just don't know what Dish has. Now they're going losing premium channels. It's like. Well, and, you know, I'm not sure HBO is what it uh, what it was with Netflix and everything else. But well, still, it's, uh, you know, people pay for it. And that's a premium service. So it's still good. Pro- I mean, still their programming is still pretty cut, good. Cuts into their uh, into their budget. All right, last night, did you watch, and we can get into this just a little bit. Did you see last night on Thursday Night Football that compelling game? Oh, boy. Uh, did you see during the National Anthem there was another, another kneel? Yeah, I saw this. And I didn't it, see it. I read about it. And the, the kneel, you know which player kneeled? It, we're not talking about a player. David, do you know? It was. I didn't even watch any of it. A cheerleader. Yes. Yeah. A 49ers cheerleader. I, I find it interesting because it's we're way, we're almost past the whole kneeling. I thought thing. we had. I thought yeah. about it last week. And, and out of and it. out of nowhere, uh, a cheerleader d- decides to do it. I mean, is this a an, an act of of attempted relevance, fame, um, or has she just decided? You know what? I'm for the cause. You know how like sometimes you'll read an and this will happen to me, and I'll admit it. You read an article. And you like go crazy, like, oh my god, I can't believe this happened. This going yeah, on, yeah. and then you look at the date, and it was like from two years ago. That's uh, probably what happened to this girl. She's like, oh, oh my you god, think that this happened? is such a a big thing now. I should get involved. I've been living under a rock, and I just <laughs> yes, found out this is going exactly. on. Yeah, all right, could be, could be, maybe that is possible. Um, she also spent the night. Uh, she was looking for a metal detec- detector. She could not find a, <laughs> couldn't find a Radio Shack. Uh, speaking of that, we'll have an update on that on that story coming up. And the new uh, four new retail boutiques 
have now opened up at the Turning Stone. Oh, yeah, this uh, is cool. New shops, which opened yesterday, are owned and operated by um, a, a business guy out of Syracuse, Joel Shapiro, who owns and operates Mr. Shop in Armory Square. The Commons at Turning Stone, owned and operated by Shapiro, include uh, Revel, which is a contemporary men's and women's clothing and casual wear store, Willow and Jay, which is women's clothing, Juniper, women's clothing and accessories. You're seeing a trend here. Mm -hmm. While the guys are at the table and the women are like, come on, let's go shopping. Um, And Polly Cooper is uh, women's clothing as well. The 250 square foot center um, was going to include a six screen movie theater and luxury bowling alley, along with 60 upscale, upscale shops initially. But with the brick and mortar problems out there today. Uh, this was the decision, and everything opened up yesterday. 629, Andrew updates the news. There is some, uh, depending on where you are in the area, some very heavy rain. So be aware of that as you're driving along, but it's mild this morning. You'll be at about 50, 50 to 55 degrees, depending on where you are, to start things off here this morning. 629 at WIBX. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Jim in New Hartford standing by reached out on, uh, was it Wednesday? Uh, so. Looking for some help. Uh, Tim, good morning. You had lost your, your wedding ring. Hi, good morning, Bill. Yes, I did. That was Tuesday. Tuesday. So, yep. So I took the day off. How, I called in sick. Halloween day, and I spent the whole day looking for it. Um, now, did you, did you get any help um, with the uh, metal detector situation? With, yes, because thank you for the person that called in, because I I went online and never, nowhere did it say that Bass Pro Shop had them. Oh. They had a bunch of them. So, yeah, cause, and thank you so much to Dana, one of your callers who Dana. came in and offered their mm-hmm. assistance, but I couldn't wait. I went over and bought one. And I looked all day long until it got dark Halloween night. Wow. And all sorts of trick-or-treaters, so maybe they must have kicked it up. Because I went out last night after I got home from work, and it was right there where I already looked. Oh, my God. So you didn't even need the metal detector? You didn't even end up needing the metal detector? You just kind of went out, looked down, and saw it? I moved the, the jack-o'-lanterns. I turned them around, so I was going to keep them for, you know, for the yeah. fall decorations. Yeah. Just to turn them around, I didn't even have the lights on, and it was right there. Wow. And I had looked there with the metal detector. My wife had looked. We looked. It was it was like divine intervention, I guess. Wow. <laughs> it's like it's like the keys showing up and making a murderer. Remember how that happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I did lose a pair of keys, so maybe I can find them somewhere. It, <laughs> Just don't it, let the Manitowoc it, County Sheriff's Office. It does me. it it does make those those situations where you kind of look back, uh, Tim, and you're like, I know I looked there. This is really weird. Yeah, how that, we did. Uh, and my sisters know? even came over. They helped. Yeah. Everybody's walking around in the rain. I was like, how? So. I'm just thinking maybe it was all the little trick or treaters that maybe somebody kicked it up. Yeah. To, I, right. I don't know, but there or, it was. And or, my, or it was my, under my the pumpkin. My wife and I maybe. were both in tears, and I just wanted to thank you guys for being, you know, for helping me out. Well, I'm glad it all worked you know? out, uh, so, Tim. And uh, who knows? Maybe this is an example of divine intervention. You just yeah, don't know. Maybe St. Anthony. That's mm-hmm. the one that I pray did to. too. I prayed. It was All Saints Day yesterday, and yeah. I prayed as many as I can think of. Well, so I'm going to go out and use it. Maybe I'll find some more gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would head immediately and buy many lottery tickets. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Don't do that because you're already in the in the doghouse. I mean, don't go down that road. <laughs> uh, we had a little blackberry brandy to celebrate. So, well, we're all... good, Ooh, good okay. for you. Yeah. Sounds like a wonderful night, Tim. Yeah. So, thank you guys. Congratulations. Uh, Thanks, every weekend. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we want to, uh, and Dana, um, who Dana and I me only, uh, just it, it was one of several people that were r- willing to come over there and and help. And, and the she whole wasn't even going to because he because Tim was like, I'll rent it from somebody. No, she, she was just going to let him she use let it. Him take it. Yeah. Uh, and it turned out that uh, you know he went and. Uh, he, he purchased one, so there you have it. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Boy, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was that was fast. a quick dial in. <laughs> I was supposed to catch it. Nice you. try. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> how about that, Rachel? Quick. <clears throat> I looked up and I'm like, oh my god, she's on the line. And I'm glad she was because my forecast is not in front of me. <laughs> Here's uh, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Witter. Do you, are you are you standing by? Maybe even sixty mid six. Oh, hello. Are you standing by mid sixties today? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, wow. We're already in the 50s, and then any rain showers that we get, at least for this morning, may actually turn into thunderstorms. That's the nature of the storm system. Um, it's just, it's much warmer. We're actually, like, almost feeling a little humid, so wow. kind of strange for the start of November, but there are some changes with it, too. It's really just today that we'll have this, and then um, rain showers tomorrow, but that's going to be with the cold front, so much cooler air is going to work in 
starting tomorrow, so it's going to be back to more of a November-like feel yeah. to the air tomorrow with highs in the 40s, but we'll dry out on Sunday, so it'll be good to see sun for basically the entire day. Extra hours of sleep, it doesn't get much better than that, I don't think. You're right. And then, um, I mean, are we kind of looking at a little bit of uh, a little bit of better, better weather next week, a little less rain next week? Um, unfortunately, it's kind of a, an active pattern, so we're yeah. just going to get some systems thrown at us um, one right after the other. So I think at least the first half of the work week, probably some good rain chances. But um, maybe later on next week, things will settle down and temperatures will kind of moderate yeah. themselves. Yeah. The problem is, like, when we get this warm this time of year, it doesn't really come without consequence. So, yeah, it's 60 degrees, but there's going to be rain and wind with yeah. it, and that's mm-hmm. exactly what we have today. What is about, I mean, it just seems like this October uh, and uh, and early fall has just been dismal. Yeah. Um, I mean, we didn't remember we had a, an 85-degree 80, day, right, in, uh, earlier in the month. Yeah, and I, I think for the most part, October, or we ended October a little bit above average, um, mm. even though the last couple of weeks have been um, kind of nasty. The, the first part of the month was actually well above average, and those 85-degree days and stuff, they'll, that'll push you right up to right, right. well above average. So it right. all evens out in the end, and I think that by the end of this month, you know, well, we'll be yeah. talking some other things. There, you're, you'll still get to use that snowmobile. It all oh is coming. Gosh. Rachel, we oh, appreciate I know. it. I know. Thank you so much, Rachel Witter, Chief Meteorologist at Eyewitness News. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, Chinese Jeep Powers right now. I want to get an update on the synagogue shooting uh, in Pittsburgh, where we are with that today. It's been an awful week of, uh, of funerals. Ray, or Tanya, good morning. Good morning. Um, yes, the last one of those funerals will be held today. Rose Mallinger, um, who is 97 and she is the last one that will be laid to rest today. She was uh, one of those 11 people that were killed. Her daughter was actually one of the, the people that was hurt in this. Wow. Um, yeah. Now, Robert Bowers was in court again yesterday. He pleaded not guilty. Uh, he was not in a wheelchair this time. I guess he was you know, walking of his, of his own power, but he has been arraigned on a 44-count indictment. Uh, some of the things he's charged with include murder, hate crimes, obstructing the practice of religion, among other things. Uh, just an awful story. And I have to tell you, I really felt that after, and we saw some of it in in some of the commercials around here, that after this happened last week, that we would see some of the the nastiness in the, uh, in the, in the commercials, the television and radio commercials, and just the rhetoric itself kind of go away. And it did start to, but it has not, uh, it didn't, it didn't last long, right? No, it didn't last long. Matter yeah. of fact, uh, one of the the headlines in uh, in the Washington Post politics section today, I just saw it as I was was you know every morning. I, I do like you do probably and go in and peruse all the headlines yep. and see yep. what you know what the big stories are today. And and there was one that you know talked about the president's rally yesterday and and how he um, was blaming the Pittsburgh shooting and the pipe bombings for slowing the momentum of the GOP. Now whether or not that that's actually happening you know it's hard it's hard for me to tell i'm not yeah, a political yeah. analyst but it definitely is getting you're right it did, has not stopped the amount of um you know commercials back and forth and not that i've seen anyway certainly, prior to the midterms yeah. here certainly shows the uh the at least what these two political parties how they feel the importance of this up, upcoming midterm is there that this? is that is absolutely true. I mean, mm-hmm. you can look at the early voting numbers in a lot of states that are having early voting right now. I mean, I've been keeping an eye on uh, uh, Tennessee's because it's, you know I lived there for a long time, so I follow a lot of Tennessee journalists and Tennessee uh, government folks, yeah. and they release the early voting numbers every day. The new a new you know number comes out, and I'm just like stunned because it's beating. You know everything that that has pretty much come before it. I don't know that that there's ever been a turnout like this. Well, we, at least not in the last twenty years. And you kind of wonder every time the president talks about um, immigration, the the the, uh, the caravan. Uh, I do believe that he energizes his base, and that he's doing exactly what he wants to do. However, I do wonder: Are you also energizing the other side as well? Uh, the the answer to both of those is yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, because yesterday he, you know, he had his uh, his press conference yesterday afternoon. Uh, I watched probably about three fourths of that, mm-hmm. 
And um, that was exactly what that was designed to do. Right. Uh, right. There was not a a new mention of like a new mm-hmm. policy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this was stuff that had already been kind of put out. So, you know, yeah, this is it's crunch time for the midterms. And, and I don't I don't expect this to, to go away anytime soon, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, as far yeah. as the you know rhetoric on, on from everybody. It's yep. not just him. Yep. All right. Uh, you have one. Well, more I was just going to say with regard to the early voting quickly, a lot of number, you uh-huh. know, in some states they report it's a heavy Democrat early turnout. Republican. Does that say anything for early indications of enthusiasm for either side? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, from what I've understood traditionally, um, that Democrats get out and, and I guess early vote and mm. Republicans are more likely to vote the day of. Mm. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the case this time, because, again, you, they've kind of turned the numbers on their ear. Yeah. Um, I, I wish I, I wish that was I wish I was assigned one story that I could just dive right into all yeah, the yeah, numbers. Yeah. This would be it. <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry, we were supposed it, to talk about the Pittsburgh. It purpose. is it is fascinating though. So and and again, it's it's hard to, to not think about uh, uh, this midterm when we're talking about Pittsburgh. We shouldn't be sure, but yeah. we really yeah, shouldn't be. But it's it is an issue in this campaign. So all right, Tanya, yeah. as always, thanks so much. Enjoy the weekend. Anytime. Thank right. you. Coming up, we'll talk to Willie Waffle. Big movie coming out this week. And it's the one about Queen. I'm really, really excited about this movie. And we'll talk to Willie Waffle about it. He saw it last night. He's going to give us the take, what he thinks, and some other upcoming blockbusters, the holiday season of movies, uh, which is probably the best time of year to, to see a movie. Uh, it's underway. Tanya J. Powers, thanks. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Wondering about uh, any of the movies that are coming up. There's uh, three we'll take a look at here. Are all three, Willie, you're, you're, uh, you're on here? All three, baby. It was a busy, busy night last yeah, night. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Wow. All oh. right, so I want to I wanna get these out of the way. Um, nobody's fool. Okay. Yeah, quickly, quickly. <laughs> nobody's fool. What do you think? You know, it, it's it's a typical Tyler Perry movie. It's kind of outrageous, kind of, you know, a little bit over the top with the comedy. Then it wants to tell a heartfelt story. It's like one and a half waffles. Okay. You know, it's just there. Uh, there. Is there a new Nutcracker out? What is this? Oh, yeah. this they, They've ruined your favorite Christmas uh, ballet. They've made a movie out of it. But not really. It's supposed to be kind of a sequel. And it's supposed to be about this girl's or the, the, the star of the movie's or the star of the ballet's daughter. And she's got to go off to the four realms and somehow deal with them and stop the evil queen. And it's just boring. It, it's ridiculous. And here, Knightley talks the whole time. She plays the sugar, sugar plum fairy. She talks the whole time like she inhaled an entire blimp full of helium. I'm going one waffle. All righty. So there we have the two movies out of the way, and now let's talk about the blockbuster. Uh, There's a scene in the new movie of Bohemian Rhapsody about how many times Freddie Mercury had drummer Roger Taylor sing a high harmony. And here are the actual, listen to this, Willie, the actual isolated vocals of the band during that part. You hear two different examples of Roger's high part, and it ends with the real section of the song so you can hear it all combined together. All right, Willie, don't disappoint. How, how... Well, I wouldn't be disappointed. You'd be the people who made the movie. Aww. Yeah, good point. Uh, how was this movie? You know, I think it starts off as kind of a typical band coming together movie. You know, they meet, they go out, you know, they have their first hit, they go off on the road, there's turmoil, there's trouble. That whole part you've kind of seen before. The second half of the movie is where Bohemian Rhapsody really takes off when it, it gets much deeper into the life of Freddie Mercury, you know, as played by Rami Malek, who goes so far beyond just doing an imitation of Freddie Mercury. Because, you know, it, it's hard to do that. Freddie Mercury, people who know him, was, you know, one of the most outrageous, over-the-top performers you've ever seen in your life. And you get that here. And you get that character that he was in real life. But Rami Malek, in the second half of the movie, takes it into a more emotional place the challenges that he's facing, the the feelings that he has inside of him, trying to figure out who is he really, what does he truly want out of this world, that's where I think the movie truly takes off. What do you, uh, just offhand, what do you uh, what do you give it? Three and a half waffles. Nice. Wow, so that's worth seeing. Uh, so, oh, absolutely. So what what were you in this movie, without giving away too much, were, was there anything that uh, that blew your mind about this, uh, this band and, and Freddie Mercury? Well, you know, I, I think as far as the band goes, I mean, I, I think, I, you know, I think 
I was familiar enough with Queen to where I know the songs and yeah. I know the story. Yeah. Um, the movie itself does go for a little bit of cheap laughter, although you're going to enjoy it, where Mike Myers plays the record executive who doesn't like Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, he plays it. That's awesome. And, yeah, and, 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 and he, he gets a really great line in the movie. Why did they uh, – I, I have to admit, I was never a huge Queen fan, um, but, I, but as time goes on, I think we look back on these bands and – appreciate them uh time does that it seems and, and that's how i feel with uh, so I, I really am looking forward to seeing this but there was a big thing and it's and i'm assuming it's in the movie about the songs were too long and you could not mix this classical style with rock it just it wouldn't work right yeah and that that's the whole mike myers scene yeah. as the record executive who's telling them listen you, you got to have a three minute hit record like queen killer that's what you need to do and, and the fight over what's going to be the single from the album and how they're pushing for bohemian rhapsody and he's pushing for something that all the rest of the band is mocking so that that's really interesting seeing that you know the artist fighting for what they believe in and what yeah. they know will be the truth and, and was there ever a time where because i would have seen like a song by queen like crazy little thing called love would be the song that the record company wanted them to do and maybe not the style of, of, of music that they wanted to do. Is that a part of any of that? You know, there's, there is a little bit of that, you know, kind of uh, the fight over Bohemian Rhapsody gets into that. Yeah. You know, okay. it, it, where, where they start fighting and they say, listen, what band do you want us to be the band we are or the, you're putting out all these hits that we don't want to do anymore. You know, and that that was kind of interesting. And I think, you know, also the the uh, the fight that Freddie Mercury has with the band when the temptation is there to go solo and to be mm. his own act. Yeah. That part and, and the manipulations that are going on in the background, I think, is, is fascinating in the movie when when they get into that part of that. And, and then I, I would wonder, um, obviously, it shows I'm assuming it shows Freddie Mercury as being a brilliant, uh, a brilliant, not only uh, uh uh, marketer, but a brilliant musician. Uh, is he also? Does it also show that he was he was crazy? I mean, what do you find about the the real person? Well, you know, I think I, I appreciate him more for being the producer and and musician that maybe I always viewed him more as a lead singer. And yeah. I think in this movie you get more of a sense of how he's a, a songwriter and and a producer and knows how to put the the music together. Um, you know, when they we talk about how crazy he was, they talk about you know being very flamboyant and very over the top. And being that way in real life, not just on stage, yeah. but the consequences of that, and and what what he's doing to kind of you know be that way to mask the insecurity he has inside and the things that he's gone through in his life, which I thought were really interesting as well. All right, uh, well worth seeing. Three and a half waffles and Bohemian Rhapsody. That's the uh, that's the title. Look for it. It's in theaters right now. Willie, as always. Thanks, man. Hey, I'll talk to you next week. All right. Uh, by the way, next week when we talk to you, we'll all have a a, a newly elected congressperson. I wonder which one. Oh, you think so? Well, you're right. That's a good point. We might not <laughs> even know by next Friday, right? It's possible. Well, I would say, A, I don't know if it's going to be a new congressperson, and B, you might not know. If you ever want to talk about a recall I've been through or a recount, yeah. I've been through those. I'll tell you how I, painful it is. I want to <laughs> clarify. I want to clarify what I said. I did not say a new congressperson. I said a newly elected congressperson. Oh, okay. That okay. could be. That could be. Believe me, I'm not making that mistake, Willie. I'd be crushed here. <laughs> All right. You enjoy the weekend, man. Thanks so much. All right, talk All right. to you next week. Willie Waffle. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. One of your greatest uh, your your greatest attributes, I believe, is the way that you get out in front of stories and you communicate. You always did a great job. Not to say that it's not currently being done, but uh, in some cases you, you're out training uh, training people, on, on especially law enforcement agencies, on how to communicate, how to get out in front of a story. I think it's really important, right? Uh, yeah, I teach pretty regularly, at least once yeah, a month. Yeah. Uh, I teach uh, a public information course uh, within the state, and I'm actually going to start teaching for FEMA uh, coming up here pretty soon nice. down in uh, Emmitsburg. Well, I want to get you in on uh, on this 22nd congressional race, but from a law enforcement standpoint, we'll get to that. I want your take on uh, a couple here. Obviously, what happened in what happened in in Pittsburgh was awful. And now there's a pastor in a church in Des Moines, Iowa, that decided to take the president's advice, not necessarily to arm the um, arm the church, 
But uh, they have installed, are you ready? This is unbelievable. They've installed what they're calling the Serminator. Oh, come on. It is a uh, bulletproof pulpit in a case, in case, by the way, there's ever a church shooting. It has a built-in gun cabinet so he can pull out his gun and return fire. He calls it the Serminator, and here he is talking about it. Right here, I have a spot where I can put my gun, right here. The magnet on it? It's got a magnet. Yep. It just literally sticks on there. You know, it's um, in the front, we have bulletproof plates that, that you know, literally, I can't remember what the, the strength is of the plates, but they're steel plates, basically, that are in the front of this thing. It makes it really heavy. But, uh, I, you know, if there was ever a thing, I could just duck down, you know, and... And be safe. Save you know, myself. This thing. Yeah, while your your while parishioners you're, yeah. are dead. What? I mean, <clears> come <throat> on. Oh yeah. Well, I've got a gun to return fire, but what do you think? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, you know, first of all, what happened at Pittsburgh? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Awful. Every, every time you see these uh, these people targeted because of the race or, or yeah, their religion, yeah. uh, it just shocks me in 2018 that these conversations are still being had and, all and, these and, years. And, it's, and, it's crazy. And it tells you that. The problem is not, just my opinion, the problem is not the guns. The problem is not arming people. The problem is not better security. The problem is the what makes someone like this tick to hate someone based on their race or their religion and to hate them so much that he could walk in and just shoot up innocent people. Right. That that if we don't focus on that, we will never correct the problem. Listen, uh, everybody knows hatred, bigotry, all those sorts of things. Those are learned behaviors. You're not born yeah, that way. Yeah. So you're taught that. So right, is right. it in home? Is it in school? I don't know. But uh, something's got. And, and I've said to you many times. We talked about these these shootings. It, it's not going to be solved one way. Yeah. You know, they uh, you can't legislate your lay, legislate your way out of these things. Mm-hmm. You just cannot. Yeah. yeah. It's got, it's got to come from all different levels. Yeah, holy moly. Um, anyway, uh, in the uh, in the 22nd uh, congressional race, of course, there was a debate last night. We'll get you some audio from that. Uh, it seemed like it was, uh, it was quite civil last night. Obviously, we're, we're nearing the end. We're almost there. From a uh, position of a law enforcement official, um, what's your take on this? How have each of the candidates stood up to assisting law enforcement? Uh, well, for me, and I, we've hit, we've talked just about this mm-hmm. before because I think you and I are very similar in that respect. I'm I'm registered Republican. I think I consider myself sort of right of center, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I'm I think there's good points on both sides. You know, mm-hmm. Republican, Democrat, Independent, all that. Uh, for me, I try to go by the individual person, right. and I think what they've accomplished. I can tell you, for me personally, with the police department, uh, I know I worked with, uh, and actually, it was it's really interesting that. I was looking this up because I have some files from way back when. Is actually today is the six year anniversary of Linda Turner when she was murdered in New Hart- in uh, New- North Utica in the hotel. Wow. Today, six wow. years. And if you go back, actually that goes back to Anthony Berdisi's one of his first laws was I don't know if you remember they changed the parole uh, so that parole uh, interviews from then on were interviewed and had to be shared with law enforcement. And, right, because that was a parolee, right? Was that right? Uh, Remember, he was yeah. paroled, a mm-hmm. sex offender, predator, paroled, yeah. and in his interview said, "Don't let me out. If you do, I'm going to do this again." Yeah, and they let him out anyway. And and then one of the other things, the big legislation that came out of it why, was why would they let him out? Because it, he was being honest, crazy, uh, what, right? What great, are you that, thinking? Right, that was the part of it. So, but that the part of that new legislation that he got put in that he, I think that was one of his first bills yeah. he sponsored was to say that that interview needs to be tape recorded and shared uh, if there's somebody that's sort of on the radar. Yeah, yeah. And the other part of it was, remember the photograph? Remember the big photograph issue was how he looked considerably different? Remember yes. he had to shave, tie with the glasses? Mm-hmm. And then when he was finally caught, he had a full beard. Was that photographs had to be taken every 90 days right, now right. for, for uh, these sorts of people. So I think those, uh, and that goes back then, and I remember way back then in those conversations, the question he asked was, what would make it better? And right. I always was impressed by that, that mm-hmm. actually somebody that had a hand in oh, making the asked, law actually, he asked, right, you guys. right, Anthony asked, like, how could you make this better? Yeah. And I, I actually was surprised, pleasantly surprised that yeah, somebody yeah. would even ask, like, from the people that actually do the work, mm-hmm. how can you make this better? And I remember that was two things that came out of it. And I was always impressed by that. And over the years, I know he helped the Utica Police Department. I mean, the last command bus that we got that we looked for, like, 10 years to replace our 
our old dilapidated school bus. Yeah. Uh, he got the money for that. And there was a bunch of other things. Like one of the things we changed, you know, with, with police unions, uh, we're a union shop, which means if you work there, you have, well, until this new law was just yeah, changed yeah. by the Supreme Court, you have to be a part of the union. Right, right. And one of the things we've always complained about across the board was, we're, we have to pay dues, and yet we get taxed on it federally and state. So mm-hmm. there was a little bill that they passed that said, okay, well, you shouldn't have to pay income tax on something that you're mandated right. to do. And it wasn't yep. a lot of money, mm-hmm. but it was sort of like the thought that, that yeah. went down with it. Yeah. So uh, just little things like that I've, I've always been impressed by. And you, I've told you before we've talked about with the gun issue. I I agree almost 100% with everything he says about guns, you know, the – you know making sure people with mental illness don't have them, making sure people with domestic violence, make sure there's a background check. I think most people agree with that, regardless. And I know lots of people that have permits, yeah. and they all, I think most of them feel that way. So do you, uh, so you support Brindisi? I do, only because yeah. I, I think when I, when I listen to him talk, and I listened to much of the debate last night, like the whole thing, yeah. I just think he talks like a normal person. It's not always about the politics. I think it's about what's the best thing. So, and, you know, I different people, I have friends who disagree with me, yeah, you know, yeah. for whatever reason. But do you uh, and and oftentimes, um, if you're Republican, the the concern is that uh, he's going to say he's not voting with with uh, Pelosi, but he's going to have to do it. That's what he's going to do. He's lying to you if he tells you he isn't. Does that affect you at all? I well, mean, that, that by the way is there was one political uh, Rep- Republican operative that was on saying that's what he's going to do. You don't believe him? He's lying to you. Do you believe that? I don't believe it because I think I go by history. I mean, it, there's no secret here that he and Joe Griffo have teamed up dozens and dozens of times on different things. Yeah. That shows right there the guy can work across the aisle, mm-hmm. which for me is what I'm looking for right. in any politician. Because if if you sit in a room with people that all think the same thing, do you ever really get anything accomplished? I think it's different yeah. opinions yeah. that – you know, sort of make the gears turn. So I am so surprised that in their commercials they didn't bring out. So because obviously the Republican and some of these commercials are not Claudia Tenney. They're they're outside groups, groups they're, or yeah. whatever. Sure. Um, and it almost is that we talked. It's like cookie cutter. It's like the same spot is running in Iowa. They just you know, grayscale somebody else's picture and put in some demonizing <laughs> voice. So but um I, I I do really uh, believe that that, that he is. Uh, I, I'm not sure that you can come out and. Uh, how do you fight the How do you fight the lying? Uh, he's going to lie. I'm surprised that they haven't come out to fight that by putting up a picture of uh, of the the debate that he did. Remember the or what was it? It wasn't a debate. State of the state. It was a state of the state address where he held his own state of the state address with an empty chair right. with a Cuomo sign on it. Why would it, uh, that should end up in a commercial? I think that would help show that he was independent, but I never saw any of that. That takes a lot of guts and and I mean that was long before this race came into play. So yeah. it wasn't really a, a a stunt, you know, to get people to go. I I I remember that and uh that was interesting. It's funny that you talk about the commercials. Uh last month I was teaching down in Binghamton and uh Later in the day, I was at the gym, and I was on the treadmill. I'm like, oh, okay, finally going to get to see some different commercials. First commercial comes up was, you know, Anthony Bernice is basically the devil incarnate. You know yeah, how the, the yeah, commercials yeah. are. They tear <clears throat> each other apart. And I'm like, man, I can't get away from these commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I was, and of course, I forgot that's part of the territory. It's yeah, down in Binghamton, yeah. so I had yeah. a good laugh big on that district. one. You cannot get away from it, dude. You... I just uh, was sent a screenshot of maybe this is a digital version of a of a political spot. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a picture of Anthony Brindisi in, in green, like a neon green color. It says fourteen thousand dollars, and then in quotes it says Anthony Brindisi. I will not vote for Nancy Pelosi, and then it says did then why did he take her fourteen thousand dollars? If he can't be honest about her about that now, how will he be honest when he gets to D.C.? Which is in, in uh, the similar. But, uh, he admitted in, in the yeah. debate that he had taken the money. Well, I think they uh, all he, take he money deny from. That he... I think they all take money from PACs, yeah. don't they? I mean, it's my understanding. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I, I thought one of the lowest moments of the debate last time for Brindisi was when the two of them were going at it over just that very story. Uh, Tenney was charging that he had taken money from Nancy Pelosi. He was charging that she had taken money from I don't even know Spectrum, probably. Spectrum. It yeah. might have been Spectrum. And both or of those are true. corporate. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, I don't believe he lied about it. No, he's, it. He's, he said. By the way, you can't because it's all public record. Yeah. But uh, I just felt that was a that's the moment where you uh, listen. Claudia Tenney's a fighter. 
um, in a debate, you know she's going to fight. Um, your point last week was, I don't expect Anthony to be that that type of guy. Um, and he was in the debate, which I think maybe we kind of felt that hurt him more. Uh, as somebody who deals in communication, how do you win in a debate with uh, with, with Claudia Tenney? If you're Anthony Brindisi and you're coming off as the guy who's who's not the, the, the fighter that's going to get in there and, and start throwing punches, uh, do you do you let her get her shots in? Or do you punch back? He punched back, and it seemed awkward. Yeah, I'm certainly not a debate expert. I, yeah. I don't know. I when I taught over the years, I and I, I teach this in public information, is I try to teach passion without emotion because they are drastically different. You're I right. Think when you get emotional, you have a tendency to be very mean, mm-hmm. mean spirited, and passion. I just think your I, strategies. I think speak, your strategies change when you're when absolutely you're being mean. right. When it somehow you're winning them, you're emotional. winning. You're winning the moment versus when you went into it. You're trying to win the. the that the, is so well right? explained. You're right. winning the and moment that's versus. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I think when you you know when you're when you're emotional about it, I think a part of your brain sort of gets switched off a little bit. Yeah. You, you say things and do things that most people would sort of take a step back and say, "What is this?" And, and yeah, I think yeah. the president suffers from that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but I think you know there's there's people that are very passionate about things, and I think Anthony probably falls into that. Sure. He's not a particularly emotional guy, but he's very passionate about yeah. things. So yeah. I think when, when you look at those two, that's how I look at them both, uh, and that's sort of the, the, the distinction I make between them. That's just my opinion. Were there things that you can look to, though, to be fair and show the other side? Were there things that Claudia Tenney had delivered on when it came to law enforcement for uh, for So, for you, you know, I retired in 2016, mm-hmm. so uh, she had been... Assembly well, she was person. in the assembly. That's right, assembly yeah. person before that. I personally can't. I'm sure there are, but I can tell you I never had any interactions. I'm, I'm sure there are. So yeah. to be fair yeah. to her, I'm sure there are things that she did, but I can tell you I never had interactions in that area. And one of the places you feel you were most impressed is where, where he asked you questions. So right. if he had it, questions was, about law enforcement, he went to law enforcement and he asked that question. Yeah, that was where it first started for me because, I, I don't know, I guess I had never had that happen to me before. So, uh, and it was, an, I mean, listen, we took it very emotionally. Many of us in the police department knew Linda yeah, because, yeah. you know, she had run that motel for years and years and years. And, you know, as, as rookie cops work in North Utica, which is quieter, sometimes in the middle of the night you'd have nobody to talk to. And, you know, you can only stop to the convenience store and her light would be on. So you go in and talk to her. Say, yeah. hey, Linda, how's it going? How's everything mm-hmm. going? She was as nice a woman as you can imagine. Yeah. So when that was when they happened, her, we were all shocked. We all yeah. took it very personally. Yeah. So I just remember that. And that sort of jumped out at me, that that first interaction I had with them. Quick question on that story. Um Awesome research on that or memory to I just to happened bring to look it up because I thought of it. And I go, holy cow, it was six years ago today. Wow. <clears throat> Unrelated to politics, I'm wondering, you, you talked about that law changing. Now, I don't know the the outcome of this. Remember there was the lawsuit over the, well, I believe it was the Bumbleo case, and that he was maybe at the hospital and then later wound up leaving the hospital and then That's his, right. his family was killed. I believe, I don't know what the status is, but I believe there was a lawsuit about that. There was. Was there a lawsuit against New York State for a guy who says, I'm going to kill someone, and they went, eh, go have fun, and he, he walked right yeah, out, how, and he went and killed there, someone? How, how is there not liability? And how is there, there no re- liability I just for don't remember hearing about so a lawsuit. It, it's my understanding mm-hmm. with, with Linda's case is she had no living relatives. So uh-huh. I don't know if someone on behalf of a friend <clears throat> could sue right. anybody. So it's my understanding in that case that she had no living relatives because okay. I know that was one of the issues with the hotel afterwards it ended up getting sold and uh but it wasn't so that was my understanding with it is she didn't have them because so i thought nobody to sue on her behalf. Uh, that's my understanding yeah. of yeah. It, never I thought about wrong, that uh, but if there's no one on if there's you don't have any family who's who's left to uh yeah. to sue on your behalf then right uh this is an awful transition but i'm doing it anyway uh do you think the starbucks christmas cup controversy is actually made up by starbucks <laughs> Uh, because okay, what's I don't drink coffee, the, so what's, what's the, the controversy? The controversy is that they they put out another cup that isn't quote unquote Christmassy enough. It's like, and by the way, if they had Santa Claus on there, I guess we'd all be happy because that's the Christian way, right, Santa? No, <laughs> no. So of course, Megan, Megan Kelly would ask you. Uh, what color Santa was, right? Wouldn't that be Megan Kelly's uh, thing? I don't think that she was Megan Kelly. Yeah, Megan, it was way back when. She, oh, she was way back when, but she was at Fox. She, she, so she'd be the one that said that uh, Santa was white. Right, right. Yeah. She'd want to know the race. Well, this Santa. controversy is that uh, um, it, they've just released their new holiday cups, 
And now everybody's saying I feel like each year they're being anti Christmas. I feel like each year they've gotten beaten up because they've gone to the other side. So like, you know, it was, you know, not Christmassy enough, then it was too Christian, but then they didn't have anything with Jesus, but then they excluded this group. I feel like each year they can't win. Well show me the the fast food joint that puts Jesus on their soda cups. (laughs) Other than Chick fil A, I don't think anybody (laughs) come on. Is that Santa in a red wig with lipstick on? Totally telling you that Starbucks is leaking this stuff out. Yeah. They're purposely, purposely creating cups to get under the skin of certain groups out there so that they sell more cups and people are talking about Starbucks. It's funny. When I Googled Starbucks Christmas cup, the first story they came up, it said, it's your annual Starbucks Christmas it's controversy. Exactly. It is. It <laughs> is. And you know what? Maybe we all need a stupid controversy with all of this, something to distract us just a little bit. Uh, all right. Uh, so your endorsement, basically, of uh, Anthony Brindisi. Here For me, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, take some Halloween candy. Uh, I bought way too much. No, I'm good. Oh, you must. Oh, you're take not good some. yet. Uh, Got a break. 7.30. Coming up, Tim Reed in studio, former uh, head of the Boilermaker, is making a, uh, a very important large announcement here this morning. We're going to speak with Tim coming up in studio in a few minutes. Also, a free money question from Hobika. It's worth 100 bucks this morning. We'll get to it. Coming up at WIBX. Well, here's something you don't. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Birthday's here today. Uh, Let me go through and make sure Andrew's not setting me up. Yes. Uh, hmm. Yep. Okay, I think we look pretty good. I'll read them. Uh, Johnny Nemec is uh, celebrating a belated from Halloween. Johnny Nemec, happy birthday. A belated happy birthday to Dickie Keeler. He is the uh, principal over at uh, Central Valley. Uh, my cousin, I don't know where in the hell he came from. He's like eight feet tall. The rest of us are all my <laughs> size. The weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but happy birthday. Um, and Ann Stedman of Poland is 54 tomorrow. and receives the cake from the Florentine Pastry Shop on Bleecker Street in downtown Utica. 734 and Andrew updates the news. Free money question is coming up next. By the way, I should give you this little tease. Uh, we had just confirmed we have Brian Kilmeade on uh, the radio with us at 8.40 this morning. Um, before, his, I don't think he's on today. I think somebody's filling yeah, in for him today. today. So, uh, but we'll have him on. He's talking about a, a, a new book about Andrew Jackson. It's Andrew Jackson and the Miracle of New Orleans, or New Orleans. Uh, so Brian Kilmeade on the radio just after 8.30 this morning. And it is going to be a little mild today, but rain um, uh, pioneers are home tomorrow night. Utica College Pioneers home tomorrow night at the Odd. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made a mistake on uh, on the sports. Um, I blame Jeff, uh, but I did you make should. a mistake. It 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 uh, today. Herkimer plays at the Dome at five p.m. Now is that at the Dome? According to it is at the Dome. They play at five p.m. today at the Dome uh, for the Class D Section Three Championship. Holland Patton plays General Brown tomorrow at 12 noon at the Dome. Fair enough? Absolutely. And, by the way, the clocks fall back one hour. So you're out on, you know, you're out on uh, Saturday night. Like, oh, we got to go home. It's 2 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock. This is a Saturday night. <clears throat> I'll be in bed at 9, at 9 probably. But. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, standing by is Court in Rome. Good morning, Court. How are you? Hey, how you doing, Bill? I feel that you are about to win $100, all right? I'm hopeful. All right, I am too. Uh, here we go. Here is your question. You have seven seconds to answer this question. Let's make it happen. Out of Hobika's pocket, 100 bucks. Here's the question. Ready? In 2016, our Congresswoman Claudia Tenney won the 22nd congressional seat by a five-point margin. Who are the two candidates... That she beat. Ready, go. Nope. Ready, go. Who were the two? I don't know. Michael R. Curie and I don't know who the other one is. I, uh, I could never remember it, but I think I finally know. I hate to Stephen Wells and George Phillips. No. No, that was the primary. But oh, right the primary. Martin Babinick and Kim Myers. Martin Babinick and Kim Myers. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Who was the American oh, well. vending guy? Steve, Steve Wells. He, he wasn't on the ballot at the end? It was Claudia. No, she was no, the no, no. She, the they, primary. she primaried. Right. Or, yeah, yeah, they primaried each other. Yeah. Okay. Uh, listen, Court, uh, not all is lost here. We're going to send you over to the 72 Tavern and Grill with a $25 gift card. It's the Adirondack Bank Center. 
Uh, it is the place where Tim and I have lunch. Uh, Tim Reed and uh, we we uh, I, I love it over there. The tuna tartare, the burgers are great. The tater tots are filled with many many carbs. So you'll love it. Hey, All right. You sit tight. Davey's going to hook you up. Thanks, man. Can hey, just, thanks, Bill. All right. Can I just mention quickly? Oh, so- and Davey, give him comments. Tickets Wednesday night if you'd like to go. However, if he needs five, give him a five-pack, whatever he wants. And give me the gift card, please. We just uh- take care <laughs> of the people who lose on this on this show. So uh, the correct answer today was, just to be clear. The correct answer was Martin Babinick and Kim Myers. By downloading the WIBX 950 app on the contact page, send me an email. Just send an email with those two answers as today's correct answer, and you will be in the running to win a free break job from a Riskany garage and tire. So and you can send the email directly through the app once right you download the app. The, app. When you the op- app's really good. I'm telling you, um, I'm not just because it's our app. It's a good app. And, and you like uh, the audio quality, right? I do. Versus AM I, radio. I do. And with new cars, stuff, it just merges perfectly. Yeah. Uh, can I mention, so we're continuing that contest. Or Thank links you. up perfectly. What would it do? I don't know. Yeah. Sinks. 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 Yeah. Sinks. Thank you to Ariskany Garage and Tire. We're continuing the contest, so so send those in. I mentioned yesterday we would announce a winner. I forgot. October's winner is Susan Clement. Clement? Susan, who submitted a correct answer for this contest on Wednesday the 24th. So I'm typing her email now, and All right. autopilot so, mode, I, I said, Susan, congratulations. You want a break job from the Florentine Pastry Shop. Beautiful. <laughs> so you want That'll a break a, job from Ariskany Garage and Tire. It's be a tasty break job. Um, Martin Babnick, Kim Myers. So that's the answer that you would email to us. And when you download the app, it comes out of the app. All right, in studio right now is Tim Reed. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Mr. Keeler. So um, we spoke earlier in the week. and yes. um, And you have decided to come out and make an announcement. I do. So actually, I, I got to thank Jeff a little bit for this because he kind of uh, – kind of push me forward a little bit you guys are talking about you know november uh no shave november and you were saying well you know what you know what is it for and jeff had said well you know it's for prostate cancer so i'm here to announce that in fact i have prostate cancer so yeah so let me kind of back up a little bit because it'll probably be the easiest way to do so for a few years i've been um, they've been kind of monitoring my PSA, and this Dr. Welkons, who I love. Let me tell you something. If you're looking for a urologist, he's your guy. He had been kind of watching it, and um, so it finally had gotten to the point where he said, you know, probably we should do a biopsy on this thing. So they did a biopsy, and then this May I, I formally got diagnosed with, with prostate cancer. And... Um, he said, you know, it's and, – and here's the really weird part about it is, is that I'm totally asymptomatic. I don't wake up at night. I don't have all the kind of the classic symptoms that you would have for prostate cancer. Don't have a family history of it. I mean, yeah. it was kind of a one-in-a-million shot. So uh, I said to Dan, um, hey, you know, I'm going to get a second opinion. And um, – and, you know, I was unsure how he was going to take it. And he said, you know, Tim, this is your life. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't feel – you're not going to hurt my feelings. And um, so I went down to – and, you know, that's – I think that sometimes is hard for doctors to, to, to say because I think yeah. sometimes they get a little bit of what I would consider the God concept, concept that, you know, I have all the answers or whatever it was. And he was enough of a man to say that. So I went down to uh, Sloan Kettering, and actually that's the reason I wasn't here for the Boilermaker is because the following day I was going in for a, uh, a second opinion. Went in from a second opinion. They told me that, in fact, the aggressiveness of the cancer didn't seem to be as bad as what it was initially diagnosed um, up here. So now I'm feeling good. He said, however, you know, we'd like to do an MRI of you, and we, we'd like to kind of re-biopsy. That took place in September. Um, Ended up that in October, early October, they got back to me and said, well, you know, the good news is the MRI is clean, so it didn't come from somewhere else. It's not going somewhere else. And But the bad news is we hit another spot where the cancer is, so now at this point in time, you're going to kind of have to make a decision. So I sat down with the doctor. Actually, the surgeon's name is Dr. Carver, which is kind of like weird. And I didn't, you know, Just a little I, bit. I, didn't, that guy. I didn't break his chops about it because yeah. I thought, number one, it probably wouldn't be the first time you heard the joke. Right, and, right. and secondly, if this guy's cutting me, you know, hopefully yeah. he has a good sense of humor. Yeah. So he said, 
Um, you know, Tim, you got to make a decision. You know, here, you know, it's either you've either got to either go with surgery or radiation, um, and either one's going to be equally successful. You know, you're a young guy, you're a healthy guy. He said, if you were fifty, I'd say take it out. If you're, you know, seventy five, you're going to age out before you yeah, before yeah. this gets you. And you know, that's one of the things too for we males. You know, if you're, you know, 80, 85, you know, all of us eventually are going to get hit by it. Yeah. This is just a question of when it hits you. So um, I said to him, I said, hey, okay, if I was your dad, what would you tell me? He said, same thing I'm telling you now. Either one. So, you know, I ended up hearing a lot of voices and I ended up, I'm, I'm choosing radiation. I'm going to get the radiation done here from a really good radiologist, a guy that's done this 10,000 times. And, I mean, mm-hmm. that's what you kind of want to have, someone that's done this a yeah, lot. Yeah. Um, I've started hormone treatments um, a week ago today, and hopefully that I've got to kind of go through that, which was kind of a surprise to me. And, no, I'm not trying to be Caitlyn Jenner's yeah. ugly <laughs> sister uh, going through this. <laughs> Um, and so hopefully in early December, I'll start, um, I'll start radiation. You know, they've kind of got to prep me up for it or whatever it is. That's going to take, I go through it every day for like five or six weeks Yeah. and, uh, and I'm going to be fine. So, so that's the attitude that you have to have. You're going to be, I'm going to be fine. Fine. You know, I mean, you think about, um, a lot of stuff. I mean, the first time someone says you have cancer and yeah. you know, everyone says, oh, well, you know, that's a good cancer. And that's kind of like. Oh, good. So you yeah. rolled a yeah. hand grenade in here, but it doesn't have that many shra- much shrapnel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're you know, going to I'd, prison, but it's only the yeah. county. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, telling my kids wasn't fun. Having the conversation oh my with my wife wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm so, you know, that she supports me and and whatever has been just a godsend. Um, so you know, we're gonna we're gonna get through this. You know, my whole thing is, and you know. I, I'm not good looking anyway, so now I'm going to look like a homeless, not good looking guy when I'm done with not shaving. But, you know, any of us that are over 50, you know, if this is kind of a cautionary tale to people is to just think about this. I mean, it's it's just a blood test. Yeah. You know, and it takes nothing uh, to you in regards to it. But, you know, this is a slow moving cancer. (laughs) No one should have to die from this thing. So that's kind of my my message to everybody. And. You know, I'm a lucky guy. I, you know, that that this thing got caught as at it a was good pl- at a good out of, time. Out of, out of that, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, especially if you don't have any symptoms, it could exactly. have been two, three years from now. And exactly, it would have been a lot and worse. the only reason it got caught was because they, you know, they tested me. You know, the PSA started going up. They did this 4K test, which is a much more specific test for cancer, and I didn't do well there. You know, but so that they were deliberate about it. But, you know, ultimately, you know, they found it. And that's, you know, that's a really, that's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to tell you, you inspired me. You you were the inspiration for me to go to, uh, I hadn't been to the doctors in a couple, couple of years. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Uh, but guys tend well, to be Well, you know, idiots. beyond that. Yeah, beyond, <laughs> beyond that. That's, uh, that's a very good point. Thank you. You just added to the yeah. case, Tim. Great. Uh, Richard but, says there's no fake news there, Bill. Uh, yeah, thank you, Richard. For that. First time we got a compliment from Richard. But, uh, but I, it, it, it was our conversations that have led me to finally go, and I'm going through all the, the tests that I should have already done at age 50. Right. But uh, if you don't get it done, it's all about getting the early notice to correct the problem. That's exactly. really what it's all exactly. about. And, you know, and I've been kind of slow rolling out in regards to it. And actually, although the word travels so quickly, so I was at a party last weekend. So everyone's coming up to you going like, hi, Tim, how you doing? How you feeling? <laughs> and, you know, so it's obviously they know. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so it's kind of like you're doing this kabuki dance. And everyone's like, yeah. oh, well, okay, except for this. Yeah. And going, oh, yeah. we already heard. So yeah. that's fine. That, uh, to me, yeah. I like that. Um that's why I like being on the radio because you can release stuff on the radio, get you all out there, yep. and you don't have to sit down. You just mass informed yeah, people. Exactly. Uh, exactly. But but your reason for coming on today was very very direct, and that is about it's all about November this month and and people guys getting. Yeah, changed. I mean you know listen I mean there's there's like wicked bad cancer out there in regards mm-hmm. to where the first conversation you have with the doctor is, you know, have you got your affairs in order? Yeah, yeah. That isn't this. Yeah. I mean, no one should have to die from prostate cancer, yeah. you yeah. know? 
and you know that if if I'm you know if I'm the poster child of prostate cancer, yeah. um, so be it in mm-hmm. regards to it. And that if it inspires one person to get tested, and they find out, well, two, um, you've already got one. So yeah, exactly. Uh, so you know if 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 they find out, um, there's treatment out there in regards to that, and and just you know, get her done. Uh, Sue in Utica wants to uh, pipe in. Hi, Sue. You're on the radio. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Reed. I want to wish you all the best. Hope God's hands are laid upon you and everything turns out right. My husband was diagnosed this past summer with uh, stage one lung cancer. Mm. Went Mm. for two consults, one not in this area, one locally. And let me just tell you, your treatment here is going to be outstanding. Uh, We couldn't ask for a better radiologist here at the Regional Transfer uh, Mm -hmm. Center. And the chemo doctor there was phenomenal. And um, let me tell you, you're not going to go through too many changes. My husband, actually, his appetite was wonderful. Didn't lose much there. You never think he was sick. They're phenomenal here. They take great care Mm -hmm. of you here. So I'm just wishing you all the best of luck. And um, God be with you. Thank you, Sue. All right. Very nice, Sue. Thank you. Yeah. And good luck with your with your husband. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Uh, Tom, you're on the radio. Good morning. Yeah, I just had a question. Uh, I yeah. have the same situation going myself and also Dr. Wilkins is my doctor. Yeah. Um, did you, you hadn't mentioned a Gleason score. Do you know what that is? I do. Have that done? Yeah. So the Gleason score is a score that's scored on you. It's, it, you know, a lot of times people would say, um, and obviously, time you you understand it is they'd say you know well what stage are you in well prostate cancer is a little bit different uh, and you'll rate from a Gleason scale from a six to a ten uh, a six is the kind of the least aggressive and if you're a six it's a <clears throat> so it's a it, you have kind of a baseline three and then the numbers will go up from there you know so the six is the least you can be ten is the worst um, I initially was a, a Gleason six. Um, and now I'm 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 rated as a Gleason seven, which was kind of at that point in time. You really need to start making some decisions. The other one was that they start looking at the kind of the aggressive nature of the cancer, and um, the bad guys. There was there was a few more of them than than normal. So that's kind of that's kind of where I I headed. So yeah, I haven't I haven't I was uh, about ten years ago. I'm seventy now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and. Uh, I chose to take the uh, – just to watch it. I'm not doing anything at all about it. And uh, I have my – I go to Dr. Wilkins, and he says, uh, you know, my PSA is like two or whatever. And uh, it's fine. It's been yeah. that way since the day I had it. So I'm just going along with uh, rolling the dice, I, I should say. So, well, you know, just – you know, just – you know, please keep visiting Dan in regards to it. And, you know, we – you know, originally I was, you know – the vigilance thing and, um, you know, not thinking about it and not doing anything about it is, you know, I, you know, you have three decisions. I had three decisions to make surgery, radiation, or doing nothing. Um, you know, and really what you have to deal with is, is what you're going to deal with is the side effects. Um, I will tell you the third choice is the wrong choice. So, you know, just keep going there and, um, and be vigilant. you know, I go to bed at nine and get up at six. I have no yeah. problems there. Yeah, I sleep. Uh, there's nothing that's uh, bothering me at all. And uh, I always thought there was like five choices. I don't know if they even do cryo freeze anymore. Yeah, they do. And there's proton beam or whatever. I, you know, and one of the things is is that you know you end up you hear you end up hearing a lot of voices, and you know, um, you know, you really that? have to feel comfortable in your yeah. own skin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as to you know what that decision is, because ultimately, um, it's your life. Yeah. Right. And the, the a friend of mine had the seeds done. And, yeah. Uh, he's he's sorry he ever had it. That that's his uh, under his body mm-hmm. condition because he gets up every hour on the hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, listen. Uh, good luck with yours. Keep an eye on it, though, Tom. I think that's the key yeah, to make sure exactly. that uh, it's not. Yeah, it sounds like so. you're doing the right yep. thing. Yep. So, yeah, like going to see the doctor. All right, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Michael is standing by on the line. Good morning, Mike. You're on the radio. Hey, Bill. Jim, hey. you mentioned that you were asymptomatic, but what would some of the symptoms be if you were experiencing the symptoms? Um, so, what the symptoms are going to be that you wake up frequently at night. 
Um, when you do go to the bathroom, you'll either have a sense of um, a, an urgency to go, um, that you feel like you haven't completely um, emptied your bladder, that, you know, kind of it, um, you have to force a lot of times when you have to, you're, you have a, a weak strain, um, all those kind of sorts of things or whatever it is are probably indicators that maybe something's going on. And so those are really, those are really those sorts of symptoms. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Yep. All right, Mike. Uh, and I, I have to give you one more. Um, who wants to pipe in? Stefan, you're on with, oh. the, with Tim, <laughs> Tim Reed. Hello, Stefan. Good luck, Mr. Reed, and uh, Godspeed to you, and get back to running that boiler maker. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Stefan. I, I really appreciate it. Not sure it'll be uh, prostate cancer. It might be the knees. Uh, exactly. uh, <laughs> <laughs> those knees. I'm afraid those knees are terminal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you for yeah. for this personal moment. Yeah. In hopes of helping other people, and that is so you. Yeah. Uh, it not, always has it's been. It's not about and, me. Yeah. It's about them, and yeah. and really, you know, just. You know, listen to your body a little yep. bit in regards to it, and you're going to be around a long, long time. Tim Reed, uh, as Stefan, Godspeed. Godspeed. Uh, Godspeed. <laughs> All right, we have to break. Uh, stand by. We'll come back uh, a lot. Brian Kilmeade uh, next hour coming up. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. He's on the line right now. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning. What's up, boys and girls? I'm really hoping you've got a, a good feel for our political climate after sitting on hold there for a few minutes. I really do. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, there's two things I never talk about, religion and politics. Very oh, smart man. My very, mother very trained smart. me. My mother trained me very well. Must make for nice Thanksgivings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, how would you describe? I'll get to the bills. But how would you describe last night's game? I'll tell you what. Um, that's a lot of times we all get fooled. I got fooled by it, by the way. I didn't know much about Nick Mullen, and no, neither did anybody else. That line went from San Francisco minus 2.5 to the Raiders minus 1.5. So I wasn't the only person that was fooled. But it's obvious now, and you can say all the right things in the press you want, John Gruden, Oakland Raiders players, they're going for the first pick. Because if you can't beat a 1-7 in seven San Francisco team in prime time, you're going to convince me that you're going you're gonna to play hard the rest of the year. It's not happened. You go against Oakland the rest of the year, you're going to make yourself some money. Because it's obvious. they got three first-round picks, and they want the first one. And they're going to mm, get it. That's so. a good point. Can I take a stab at describing uh, last night's game? If sure. not for Vegas and betting lines, the rating on this game would have been what? Point six. I've always said, <laughs> I said this on Stephen A. Smith. I've said it on your show a number of times. If you couldn't bet on sports, you wouldn't be building stadiums. You'd be building bleachers. Yeah, and that's the only reason why it. people messed <clears throat> with with the, that game last night. Yeah, um, well, it, just that bad. The, uh, if I if, if I if I could really quick, the Packers um, Rams game last week, I almost bet the over. And thank goodness I didn't, because man, would I have hated Todd Gurley this week. Well, it depended on when you bet it. It was fifty. It opened at fifty six, closed at fifty seven and a half. So you had you had late money pushing it over, and and that of course brought everything into play. Um, it's a crying shame, just from a football standpoint, that we didn't get to see Aaron go uh, do what Aaron does. That that we were robbed of something that we're not going to get very often. I think Aaron's got maybe 3 4 years left and he's so much fun to watch. And in that situation being robbed by a selfish player that um made a decision because he was upset. And that's terrible. And as far as yeah. Buffalo is concerned, um to have covered that for their defense to have played mm-hmm. as well as they played and to cover that game the entire way and to have Derek Anderson make that oh. kind of decision to cost Buffalo backers a ton. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, it just goes to show you how watered down the quarterback play is in the NFL. And then think about this. You have a guy in Derek Anderson that you get signed off, off your couch who has done nothing, collected a couple of paychecks, and, uh, hey, thanks, we'll see you later. And here's a kid, Nick Mullen, second year in the NFL, signed off the practice squad that goes out last night and has a game. 
What are the Bills doing? Where's your practice squad yeah, player? Yeah. Where, where, you know, where's your scouting department? And that just goes to show you that, that what San Francisco is doing out there, they, they're heading in the right direction. Not saying the Bills aren't. But the Bills' defense is yeah. flat out playing right now. Oh, they, they played are. their guts out yeah. to have the offense do what they did. Calvin Benjamin is a no-show. It's The play calling was atrocious. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't put it all on Derek. The, the, the middle of the field was wide open. It was, it was literally... Um, I think mean, second down, you could have thrown to the back out of the backfield, picked up five, picked up six, but to throw down the middle of the field, careless um, and a shame because I've been yeah. I've been pretty hot and and I've lost I think I'm six and three in my last nine in Buffalo Monday night, double digit divisional home dog should have got there and it didn't. I'm still as you can hear in my voice, I'm yeah. still perturbed. Hey, I, 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 the thing that bothered me about Anderson is every time they're in a a, a third and long. Why are you throwing the ball short? I don't understand that. You got to make fifteen yards, or you're punting it. At least take a shot. And yeah. and every time it, it's a short pass, and and the receivers got to make ground up, and it just didn't happen with the Patriots. So yeah, uh, it, what do you, what do you think of the, the about the decision? Uh, they're going to go with Peterman, and if you're Peterman right now, you came, you were on your way back, you were bringing him back, and then it just all hell broke loose. You're throwing interceptions left and right. Is his head rattled to the point where this is going to be a disaster against Chicago this weekend? No, I don't think it is. Um, you, you've you've had time with your offensive coordinator in the quarterback meetings to get a grasp of what they want you to do. Um, I think they're going to run the ball more on Chicago. Uh, I think they're going to get him in favorable third and shorts. Um, I, I, to your point, that if it is third and long, he's not going to force anything. I think that's right. what Derek didn't want to do, force anything. Mm-hmm. The defense is playing well enough that it's almost like don't offense, don't lose the game until you have to win the game. Right. And then you can lose the game. But in the yeah. first, second, third quarter, don't lose the game. I think he'll be fine. I really do. I think well, he's had time to, to have been yeah. worked with. And, um, and, and that's think about- a really big number, ten and a half. I think Buffalo plays Chicago close. Think about the opportunity Peterman has right now. He has another opportunity. All he's got to do is go out there and play well. And, not and all a of pick. a sudden, everybody forgets about everything prior. So well, this I is think, the opportunity here. Yeah, I think he can watch Nick Mullen last night, watch the throws he made, and watch how he had command of the offense yeah. and just go out. And and play yep. and do what you've done and don't force it. Quarterbacks in the NFL get in trouble when they force things and don't don't take what's in front of them. Uh, most certainly he did. It helps he's playing at home. It helps he's playing at home that's and true. it helps it's playing against the defense yep. that's a little banged up. I was going to say, can you put the rose colored glasses down? Khalil Mack is going to have 19 sacks by halftime in this game. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I don't think so. I don't. I, I, Chicago's playing well, but remember they went on the road to Arizona. Um, and struggled. Um, this is a team that away from home yeah. has struggled a little bit. So I'm not I'm not anointing that they're just going to come in and cover that number. I'm sorry. I, I it's a double. Who are the Bears and Mitchell Trubisky to be laying double digits on the road in this situation? Oh, what is the line at? Ten and a half. Oh boy. Yeah. In Buffalo. All right. Well, that's a great point. Uh, Jets of Miami. What do you think? Jets have owned this series. As of late, um, they're five zero oh, and two. Their last seven against the spread in Miami. They like South Beach. I'm going to take the Jets plus the points. And Andrew uh, Green Bay plays the Patriots. I will the late, be there Sunday. Late game on Sunday okay. night in uh, nope. in Massachusetts. Andrew, for you, um, I'm going to give you a bet you can make where you're going to make some money. Okay. okay. There's nothing on the face of the planet Earth that your Green Bay Packers and your Green Bay Packer defense are going to be able to do to stop Tom Brady from getting at least 38 points in this game. Okay. okay. Well, that's a lot. They scored, Thank four, you. Okay. they scored 43 at home against the Chiefs, 38 at home against the Colts, 38 at home against the Dolphins, and week one, 27 against the Texans. So the, New England's going to get at least 38 points. So the question of the day, can Aaron Rodgers on that defense that watched the Bears get 31, that watched the Chiefs get 40, that Aaron Rodgers can't score 21? Answer, absolutely. Over 56 and a half. That's your uh, winning scratch-off 7-11 for you on Sunday night. Thank you. And And if you're taking the game straight up, 
Andrew's uh, career record at Packers games is 0-3. 1-3. Oh, okay. Uh, one more I want to ask you about is uh, tomorrow <laughs> at, at noon, it's uh, Syracuse and Wake Forest. Uh, Syracuse Bowl eligible for the first time since 2000 and what? 2001. So what do you think? I tell you what, he's 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 done a great job. He has. He, he really, really has. has. And they got Notre Dame coming up. That's going to be a big game in South Bend. Uh, I think Notre Dame's going to have their hands full with Northwestern. But for me, you look at the total. Wake Force put up a over 50 on Louisville. The toast posted total in this game, 76. Wow. And I still think they get there. Wow. Fun, high-scoring game. Let's yeah. take Syracuse Wake Forest over 76. As crazy as that sounds. That is crazy. All right. As always, before you do any extracurricular activity, it uh, might be a good idea to go to brandonlang.com. And as always, Brandon, we love it. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. Coming up, uh, there's a Latino Fest that is uh, happening. Is that uh, the annual going? gala? It's the yes. annual, fifteenth annual that is happening. Uh, we have some people in on that. Also, Brian Kilmeade from Fox News, the program that follows us every morning. Uh, he is off today, but the paperback of his Andrew Jackson book is uh, is being released, and he's talking about it. We'll talk to Brian Kilmeade in just a little bit as well. Uh, Comets tickets before we go to make sure, Davey, do not let me leave without giving away Comets tickets for Wednesday night. It's WIBX night at the Adirondack Bank Center coming up. 824 at WIBX. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Somebody's asking me to plug, so I'm going to plug it. Can you possibly mention the fundraiser we're having today? I'm assuming it's today. You said tomorrow, but today? I believe it was today. It was sent to me. Hmm. Well, you're going to have to call in and tell me, uh, Pat, if it's today when this was sent to me because I don't see it here. Oh, it's tomorrow. So the event is tomorrow. Boy, I'll get through this. The event is tomorrow, and it's for local veterans. Music that matters, 12 till 5 in Chittenango at Clear Path for Vets. Uh, it is a heated tent, three bands, the Old Main, the House of Hamill, and Adam Ezra Group. Uh, Ray Brothers Barbecue will be there as well. And come on out. It's, uh, it's a great event in Chittenango at Clear Path. It's for veterans. Fair enough. In studio right now, um, I'm excited to have, although I think I've lost their paperwork too, uh, but Tony Colon is in from the Mohawk Valley Latino Association, and Zaida Morell as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And so what do we have? This is your annual event, the annual gala, right, is what you guys are doing? Yes, it is. It's a 15th annual. At the, In fact, this year it'll be at the Ani at the Amandasas. Oh, nice. Uh, and uh, certainly we're excited about it. Certainly I uh, Appreciate the opportunity to be able to come on the show at the number one rated show in the in the area to let people know you the man hey, we're we're happening nice and what's happening. But uh, what what's really exciting this year is especially bringing in Alex Torres and the and his Latin Orchestra. It's a Grammy Award winning organ uh, orchestra. Nice. Uh, they've been world renowned, uh, and certainly to have them come and celebrate with us is, is fantastic. In fact, Saida and and her husband Martin uh, made that made that happen so why don't you uh, very nice why don't you let them know thank you uh thank you again for having uh-huh. us here today buenos dias a todos los latinos que están escuchando thank you so much um thank you. we're so excited i wish because- i could do that <laughs> <laughs> we're so excited because uh when uh sonia martinez asked my husband and i to be um the honorary chair people of the event is that that's a mouthful it is. Uh, so when she mentioned that there's this amazing orchestra that she wanted to bring into town to celebrate the 15th annual gala we were like okay we got to put some some power people together to help us uh, with the donation because that's what we operate on on donations right, right. and support so we have um the fitness mill carbon athletics supporting um the orchestra to come in and my husband and i and MIS interpreting services. So it's a it's a group effort, and it, we're just so excited. Nice. In fact, uh, that we this year we've had the most sponsors that we've ever had for the organization, and for the event. Uh, CNY Latino, the Y uh, W C A, it's uh, AmeriQ, Central uh, Oak Abbey, uh, Jose Perez, and uh, certainly Price Chopper and uh, Bank of Utica. These have been the sponsors that have been with us for a long time, and we want to thank them again for their sponsorship. But it's going to be a great time on the 17th at uh, 5.30 to 11. And certainly uh, what we'll be doing also is offering uh, some Latin uh, lessons as well. So if well, uh, the, cool. those, are interest, those that are interested in learning a little bit more about uh, Latin and salsa, 
Please join us. Isn't the uh, so September, August seventeenth is a special date though, right? No, it's November seventeenth. I, I, no, no, no. I, I get that, but August the seventeenth, I get it. So uh, it's November seventeenth, but the seventeenth. Okay, I was trying to make a connection to Lyndon Johnson back yes. when this whole thing was yes. uh, was enacted, which is Hispanic uh, Heritage, Hispanic Heritage Week, correct. which That's... I completely bombed that. This is so. an extension. Of, yep. uh, what we're Sorry. doing is basically <laughs> we want to extend it. I tried. I tried. No, no, you did a good, yeah. good, great job there. But what what's going on is that uh, certainly uh, Hispanics have uh, been a large part of our community, and certainly as in this country, uh, by uh, by statistics that we the most recent statistics show that will be about fifty eight million uh, wow. in, in count, and at this point uh, we are a part of this community and certainly want to expand this not just to the Latino community but to the entire community. Uh, where is the best place to get uh, Spanish food right now? I mean, I always Ooh, ask you every time. So. Uh, Joel's food is one of my favorites. Mm. It's right in that. Um, the night square. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. delicious. The food. It's a there. circle now. Unfortunately, it's a, it's got to be it's got to be renamed. So, yeah, that is great food uh, there. Are you playing some of the Latin music? Yeah, right of now? course. That, that's my ringtone. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, anything else you want to add? Yes, I just want to mention that. I mean, this is an event, obviously, that we support, uh, obviously, for being Latino. But we want to make sure that we bring the, and. The awareness that we're most, more than just, you know, Latin food and the music. We really empower people that are coming in from other areas to reintegrate into the community, to help them with uh, translating services, with educational services. We really become that bridge that connects people with our community that has been so open arms, open to, yeah. to many different cultures, but to the Latino especially. Very nice. What uh, One of the things I want to add, the tickets uh, are available. Mm-hmm. Uh, the $75 of... And students and children uh, 6 through 18, it's $20. So we're encouraging them to attend as well. And if there's any interest, please uh, touch base with our at mblautica.org for tickets. Or you can certainly call 864-8419 or 266-7548. Very nice, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. And I promise I'll be back with the pastels. Oh, I cannot (laughs) wait. Uh, Christmas time is just around the corner. Uh, 836, Brian Kilmeade from Fox News, up next on WIBX. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Brian Kilmeade, uh, Fox and Friends, of course, on WIBX each morning at 9 o'clock, is on with his, uh, his it's not necessarily the new book, it's his latest book, but the paper book. Uh, the t- paperback is uh, currently out, and Brian's on the line right now. Andrew Jackson and the Miracle of New Orleans. Good morning, Brian Kilmeade. Uh, thanks so much for having me on. I mean, the, the thing is, it is a, it's not a new book, but I did put a new afterward in, which just looked at what other presidents thought of Andrew Jackson because suddenly everybody finds him controversial. Uh, well, you, all you had to do is include the, the tweet from President Trump, right? <laughs> it was, that, well, was yeah, the, I mean, that was the first thing. That, the, yeah, well, that, that's that's part of it. I think that part of it, when President Trump hung his portrait, when he saw all the similarities between him and Jackson, when he went and visited the Hermitage, people just started putting them both together. Yeah, yeah. And I just said to myself, okay, let's move Trump out of this. Let's just move to it. Reagan, Tay Roosevelt, FDR, Lincoln, and Truman thought of it. Democrats and Republicans all thought this guy was worthy to study. They thought he was one of the best presidents ever. They all saw different things in him that they could learn from. So that's where we used to look at history. Now, all of a sudden, we're judging everybody by today's standards as if they're uh, on the ballot. Yeah. Boy, today, it's just I, – I, I, I know we all say this, and we say it so often, we're getting sick of saying, but we've never seen anything, it seems like, today. And I know his, through history, our, our presidents and our political uh, climate, it was heated. These guys used to go after – our forefathers went after each other. But today, it just seems like nothing before. Yeah. I mean, but also, the one thing I want you know, the listeners to understand is – I wrote, one of my goals is to tell stories about American history that they, they get are underappreciated and need more attention. Yeah. And that's why I focus on not his presidency, but the battle and what he did at 41, a self-trained military general. He, he wanted to be called General Jackson his whole life. On his grave, it says General Jackson, because he's really proud of what he did. And yeah. without winning that battle at the age of 41, he doesn't become the most famous man in America, and he doesn't become a two-term president. And you, in the book, you really... Uh... Uh, you present the case that, that without winning this battle, which he was completely outnumbered by the British, um, it would have changed. It could very well have changed the future of the United States at that point. I mean, just just picture this. If we never grew past the Mississippi River, right. if the country just stopped there. That's exactly the goal. We found paperwork to prove it. 
Ron Drez, a decorated Marine, who's a, who's a very respected historian, found this a couple of years ago, uh, that there were documentation that showed the British were told their general at the time to ignore any talk of a treaty and hold New Orleans. They never thought they were going to lose New Orleans. When they did and uh, lost in devastating fashion in 45 minutes, they lost 291 guys. We lost 13. We had 1,200 wounded. We had 55. And we and to beat uh, to, to crush an army like that that just beat Napoleon and forced him into exile, the world could not understand who the Americans were, but they also knew we would not go away. Yeah. They no longer could just question whether we were going to be around for much longer and do everything again to sabotage our success and our trade, and the British would be, go from our number one enemy to our number one ally. Imagine, we, we could have we could have been uh, divvied up like uh, like Europe. We could have looked like Europe. Um, yeah, I mean, Europe would have been everywhere. Remember yeah. how long they held on to India, the British? Mm-hmm. Remember how long they held on to Hong Kong? They're still in the Caribbean. Yeah. That was their attitude back yeah. then. Whole, you know, They didn't have the natural resources, so they were going to get it elsewhere. Uh, listen, I appreciate you coming on. I'm told you're on a very, very tight schedule, and I'm already a minute over, so uh, uh, <laughs> thanks. We'll uh, be listening. I'm assuming you're not on today, but we'll, we'll be listening. No, not, I am. Oh, you are. All right. I am on today. Right, right after news, yeah, well, top of the hour. Go, nine to noon. All right. We'll, we'll listen to you That's soon. Cool. Thanks so much. Uh, Brian Kilmeade, uh, right after the news at 9 o'clock. Uh, quick break. We'll come right back. Hold tight. Uh, I want to give away some comments tickets. I said I would do it, and I will. Um, I want to do this uh, greatest contest ever in the history of this radio station. <laughs> it's called the direct mail piece contest. <laughs> you're getting so much of these direct mailers. Um, what do you do with them? I collect them. I'm going to read a line from one. You have to tell me who sent it to us. Pretty easy. And if you get it right, which I'm sure you will, you'll get Comets tickets for Wednesday night. Please only call if you can use it, but let's take callers one, two, and three right now to start it off, Davey. 315-736-0186. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Here's how it works. I'm going to read a line, and the person on the line uh, gets to determine who sent this direct mail piece. And I, and just so you know, we're not going to worry about the PACs. Basically, we're saying, who is it in favor of? Yes. Okay, good word it that way. Uh, Billy and Skyler, good morning. William, good morning. Good morning. You ready to go? I am. All right, for Comets tickets, uh, all you have to do is tell me who sent out this mailer. Hope is on the way. Millions of families are suffering in agony because of opioid addiction. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Claudia Kenny. You are absolutely right. Wow. I thought it was, but Claudia I wasn't sure. was sending out, um, and I'm not seeing as many, but my wife, um, my mother, uh, my mother in law, they're all getting these types of direct mail pieces from Claudia all about the opi- opioid crisis. So, um, you think they're directed to females? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, this was Claudia's way of kind of, um, uh, their strategy is to, is to bring women in, into the mix because she struggles with, with women. So dead on Billy on fire. You are comments tickets for you. Sit tight. Davey's going to hook you up. All that right? was a tough one though, because uh, that's that was an right. issue. That, nice job. That's an issue that reaches across all, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. all sort of. Mm-hmm. Positions, whether it be local, yep. state, or federal. Let's go to Wayne in Utica. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning. Hello, Bill. Well, hello. <laughs> uh, let's see. What am I going to give you here, Wayne? Let's try. I this can't one. believe you guys said Brian killed me on It's so friggin' cool. For, uh, for a full his, 90 seconds. We yeah. <laughs> That's not, hey, you know what? You had him. It's, it's, his, right. it's, his, uh, it's his second time on with us. He came on with, with the book when he, when when he initially yeah. uh, released the book. He's so uh, down to earth. That's what I like about him. So, uh, here we go. Uh, who sent this one out? I will refuse corporate political action committee money. I will work for, with anyone from any party. I will stand up for people, not partisan politics. I will stand true to my principles and our community. I am an independent voice for Upstate New York. Anthony Brindisi, I'll say. You are absolutely right. Bingo, and you get the hockey horn. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we're going to hook you up with tickets. You sit tight. Davey's going to thank take you guys. I love okay? you. Nice job. You are the man, Wayne. Wayne. Uh, Let's take, uh, I'll take a few more calls. I'll keep this going. We're going to go right into Kilmeade. We're taking his time away. Yeah. Taking it away. Not really. Billy. four minutes. Billy and another Billy in Utica. Hi, Billy. Morning. Is it Billy? Do I say that right? We got a lot of Bills. Don't call me late for dinner, man. Okay, I'm with you. I get that. (laughs) All righty. How about this one might be a tough one. 
Okay, here's a good one for you. I've known blank for over 20 years. He has the skills, the guts, and experience to defend New York against the conservative agenda coming out of Washington. Signed, Vice President Joe Biden. Now, this is, I want to tell you right off the bat, this is not the congressional race between Brindisi and Tenney. That's a little clue. Who is this? Who is it for? I've known him for over 20 years. He has the skills, the guts, the experience. We need his experience more than ever to make sure there aren't enough bullets out there. So that, what, how many bullets does it take to kill a deer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who, 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 Who is it? Who are we talking about? Um... Not Gordon. No, please. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yes, no, Biden's cross party lines to. That's funny. Uh, this was a tough, tough one. This I'm is sorry. this is a tough. This one. is a tough one. Okay, the right, person's me, first name is. Let me uh, let me read it. Let me read it as it's written here to help you. Okay. I've known Andrew for over twenty years. I know he has the skills, experience to defend New York. We're talking about Governor Andrew Cuomo. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. There you go. <laughs> Law and order, Governor. <laughs> all right, I'm 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 still going to let you take the tickets, though, all right? Uh, Thank you so much, man. Love your show. Okay, I thanks, man. I think my man. stock and buying you, uh, kind of went down a You sit tight. Um, that, that is a tough what? one, though, because you're not thinking about Cuomo. No one right. even considers it a race. I know. That's the thing. You know, I mean, you, you, you might like Molinaro. You might, whatever. But you don't feel it's a contended race. He's up by 40 points. What is your take on what he just said? What Andrew just said. I didn't even hear what you said. Well, no, I mean, I, I He said my stock in Biden, Biden fell a little bit. Oh. Um, you don't. To me. You don't so expect. That Biden that. came up. I, I listen, expected listen, him. You don't expect Biden, who is probably one of the few voices in the Democratic Party that can come out and endorse and help someone. Right. Um, and, by the way, Biden could help him upstate, which he he needs. Um, and it, there's a huge battle right now over uh, Democrat governors, Democratic governors versus Republican governors. These governor races are huge. I'm not surprised at all that Biden. No, no, I'm not out. surprised by it. But you, here's I what don't you're like saying. He, Biden's one of the he's guys. He's a Democrat, right? He, he's no. saying Biden's a Democrat. That Andrew feels is a sane, level-headed, fairly candidate. Right. For the Democrat party. And now he's and like, like now where are you associated Cuomo. with Cuomo? Yeah, I, I feel what you're saying. Um. Cuomo. Yeah, I, I feel what you're saying. um I again, I'm, I'm, I, I'm. Biden's one of those that can make you feel like he's not a Democrat. He's a Democrat. No, I, I know Thanks that. Thanks for that. But he's a more tolerable Democrat than Andrew the Cuomo. The is in. He I, is a Democrat. I do understand, but but don't be fooled. He's no. a Democrat. No, I know. All right. I know. Um, and they didn't the, deliberate long on that one either. There, are, <laughs> there are some. Uh, there have been some doozies. I got one that said. That was actually sent to our house. This one comes from our, to our house, and I'll, I'll reveal this one. Because uh, I'm going to do this contest again on Monday and Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday. Uh, no, I won't do it Wednesday. No, please. Wednesday, God. we're going to actually, you're going to call up and tell me uh, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, how long before we're able to burn the entire pile <laughs> of direct mail yeah. pieces. Yeah. All right, how long this one is like, happy 50th birthday. Who the hell's 50 in my house? I'm not 50. My wife's not 50. Oh, Please they... enjoy these higher health care costs. Love your Congresswoman Claudia Tenney. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I saw one of the commercials that's out now. Obviously, it's not real. They mock it up. But it's it looks like a text message between Tenney and the special interests. And it says, you know, hey, thanks so much for the money. And the reply is like, yeah, no problem. I'll just vote however you want me to or something like that. Crazy. But I, it's the first time I've ever seen the use of a text message like that. First news with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com.